things we're running into is uh, people that, the trucking companies usually buy a second or third turn trucks, so used trucks, they want to convert, but one of the things we're finding is there's a lack of conversion technology, especially inside the U.S., and when it does exist, it's the companies that are having to do everything over, offshore. And so for both, well, for any of you, but especially for, for Kurt and Dan, is uh, we'd love to see, as an organization, we're based in Eugene, Oregon, and I'm based up here, we'd love to see it around here, but uh, what are some of the opportunities and challenges ways to overcome that barrier to more adoption of heavy duty fleet, especially for the aftermarket. Um, yeah, that's something I'm quite familiar with. I, mean, I know you're working with a, a great little company right here in Kent that uh, yeah. has some conversion technology for light duty vehicles. It's doing a great job on this aftermarket piece. Quite honestly, the reason there's not more of that is, is policy. The EPA has made it difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a conversion kit that will reduce the emission profile of an engine dramatically. Uh, but it has to go through a carb certification process, and that's very expensive. And it's time consuming. And most early stage companies don't have the few hundred thousand dollars that it takes to take an engine through that. And then it's only an engine that year model each time. So if you think about that policy, it makes no sense whatsoever. And it's where the government could come in and maybe help in that regard. You know, we have one company that's part of the portfolio where I serve on the board out of Florida that's got some technology to convert mine call trucks these big 300, 400 ton vehicles. Prometheus worked with them and provided the LNG for them in a, in a pilot, and we'll be doing that in another project down in Wyoming. Uh, it'll reduce the consumption, the, the, the carbon output dramatically in that regard. But again, it's a very early stage kind of technology and they run against the same thing. Um, these EPA type regulation that's holding that back. The thing is, I would, you know, I'm sort of, you know, policy moves slowly and once it gets established, it gets stuck. And so you think about the change you know, so I was in the biodiesel business, and you know, think about the change in uh, what we understand about biodiesel and biofuels, you know, relative to, and then the changes happened in natural gas prices, you know, in the last six years. And so that's, you know, so we have policies in the state that are really oriented towards, hey, we want our heavy vehicles to be used in biodiesel. Well, you know, gosh, markets change, there's still a lot more, you know, environmental impacts of you know, natural gas are still uncertain. And so, you know, people get, you know, things get stuck. And so I think that's you know, part of the challenge you know, as you look, as we look forward to saying we know we're going to be transitioning out of our petroleum-based fuels, uh, what's going to be, the, what's our going to be our fuel mix in the future? You know, it change. You know, in some way, you know, people's views change. You know, as these technologies, you know, kind of have these different horse races. And when you're having to make bets on infrastructure, so are you going to set up a system of natural gas fueling stations up and down I-5, or are you going to set up a whole system so you've got B20, you know, up and down I-5? Or, you know, what, what's, you know, you can't, you probably can't do it all. And so I think, you know, and then you've got competing business interests who are trying to, you know, influence policy and say, hey, we, we, we think this is the best solution and it happens to be aligned with our bottom line and other people who are saying other things. So I think for all those reasons, you know, things get stuck. And I think that's you know, part of the reason why, you know, over the long term, we'd like to try to get prices right and then let some of that stuff sort itself out. But at some point, you know, the public sector does have, end up having to make kind of calls on, you know, what's our direction? And so I think that's, but I'll, I'll certainly acknowledge that we don't, probably appropriately, we don't move really quickly as these market ch changes happen, but I think over time, you'll, you'll see it adapt. Well, and you, you can't blame this all on policy, but it's had a huge impact on it, and even now as it continues to have a chilling effect on entrepreneurs who want to get into this space because they see the opportunity. The other thing I think that may change it is the, the entrance of the big boys into the space because they've got this flood of natural gas. All of that gas comes from fields that they had to lease. That's the nature of the business. And those leases require you to drill. And so you're drilling and putting more gas in the pipeline to preserve your lease and your asset and getting less money for it. You're creating your own problem. So they're desperately trying to find new markets. And the transportation market is the prize. And no doubt about it, all the conference I attend and other things, everybody wants a piece of that transportation market. The only way you can displace diesel or gasoline is to have LNG or CNG, and then you have to have the corresponding infrastructure in place to facilitate that use. So it'll come. Steve. So this is kind of a follow-up question. You mentioned that the state energy policy and energy strategy came out in December. Are there uh, recommendations for legislation that will be followed up to that strategy? And, and then to the other panel members, are there some things that this legislature can do in this state? Make changes that would help to uh, the 
Yeah, so uh, there are, there's not specific pieces of legislation attached to the back of it, but we kind of uh, created things that we think are, there's enough agreement on that we have recommendations around particular policies in three buckets. So it's transportation, distributed energy, and energy efficiency. And so there's some things that say, we, hey, we think this would make sense, we can make progress in these three areas. And then there's some longer term strategies across those three buckets. And those are, and so, and which we feel like there's not enough consensus. You know, shifting to a revenue neutral carbon tax, we don't have, have agreement on that. The state will want. We think that's an idea that should be in play. But there are things we think around. You know, utility bill disclosure. How do we get more transparency? You know, so you, people know how much energy they're using. There's some things we could do with rental housing that would kind of help on the energy efficiency side. So I think there's a, you know, energy touches everything. When you start assembling the policies to move the needle on it, you can end up with a pretty long list, and so we've got a pretty long list. But when you analyze those policy, the big levers are trying to get the prices right on carbon and get the prices right on our program. I want to let Nathan ask the next one, but it's kind of just with respect to time, we will continue to be here and have often questions and, and dialogue so long as the works are scheduled. But first, we want to thank each of you for your studies. reach out, I'm happy to, if you're not able to connect with each other, the gentleman here. Um, Nate, would you like to? Sure, Nate Harris from Puget Sound Energy. I wanted to ask about uh, your thoughts on electric vehicles. Okay. We've had a few months now, we've had a few months now, we've had a couple of bolts come on fire. So we track this data pretty closely, and we've been a little bit uh, saddened by it. small to that company, but it's big for us, and um, there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of delays, you know, regulatory delays, which have, you know, cost a lot of, a lot of money in getting cars certified. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, these are very, you know, capital intensive things. Uh, the markets are really great. You see Tesla's production is, for the S model, is sold out. Uh, companies like Fisker now have you know, released the Carmel and they're, they're shipping into the, the dealers. Uh, and these are kind of, I mean, the, the leaf is one thing and the bolt, you know, is another thing. But now we're seeing that, you know, the next generation of, you know, the, these cars are luxury cars and demonstrate that you can have a phenomenal driving experience, you know, with a, you know, either all electric or a plug-in serial hybrid. So my belief, and I've got money where my mouth is on this one, is that once consumers see you know, sufficient range of choice, that EV and hybrid EV adoption will start to take off. The battery thing is you know, really, I think, been blown you know, way, way out of proportion. You know, in the political environment this year, you know, has really you know, exacerbated that, it just you know, extended the craziness around that. You know, the bolts, you know, those batteries didn't catch on fire in accidents. They caught on fire three weeks after, you know, uh, test accidents were, were, were made. So, uh, you know, and, and when you look at the real numbers of the deaths caused, caused by the gasoline car explosions today, you know, this year, I mean, if they put the numbers side by side, the controversy on the EVs would disappear like that. They're Okay. Yeah. No, I'm still seeing money going to the sector. Huge. I'm still seeing money yeah. going to the sector. I don't. I don't think from from a capital flow or an investor sentiment perspective that um, there's been a change. Mostly seeing money go into uh, better um, charging technology, um, battery technology, build out some infrastructure. I think less going into creating new car companies, and I think that's because you got Tesla, you got Fisker, you already got companies established there. Um, so while it may kind of look a little dark right now, I, I think it.